as was mentioned, I, I came here to finish a PhD under my uh, major professor at Iowa State. Uh, I'd done a master's with him and got into the service and wrote him and said, I want, after I was finishing my term in the service, I want to go on for a PhD. And he says, I'm headed to Texas A&M University to start a department of statistics. It was actually called the Graduate Institute of Statistics at the time. And I'd like you to be my first PhD student. Now, I was in the service in the office, I had a type of office type job, I was an officer, with three Aggies. <laughs> I wasn't sure I wanted to come to Texas a and <laughs> Looking back on it, it's the smartest thing I ever did. Uh, I loved the university. Now, they, it, it improved because they let women in. Uh, scenery got a whole lot better on campus, I assure you. Uh, um, they treated me well. I've met some great people. I've gotten involved, in, got involved in the community, and it's been a great place to live. And we've enjoyed it. And when I retired from the university, people would say, are you going to go back to Iowa? That's where I grew up, a small town. And I said, why? I don't know anybody there anymore. Uh, and, and, uh, no, and the winters are cold. I said, all my friends are here. All the things I need to do are here. Why would I want to leave Bryan College Station? I'm sorry. Why would I want to leave College Station, Bryan? <laughs> I used to always correct the people that it was College Station, Bryan. OK, so that's, that's a little my background. Uh, what I want to talk to you today is, is the, about the Bryan College Station public library system. Um, After I finished my term as mayor, I did 10 years as mayor, and then they voted in term limits, by the way. Um, I was approached by Clara Mounts to serve on the advisory committee for the library system. Well, the, the three years that between my term on the council, I was on the council, I took one year to to finish an unexpired term for a candidate that was running for mayor. And then I talked to the mayor and I was out of cycle. We had two year terms at the time. I was out of cycle with the mayor. And I said, I, I'm interested in running for mayor, but I said, what I'm going to do is, he, he said, well, I'm not going to run next time. He said, I'm not going to run for reelection. And uh, I said, well, then I'll take a year off and then run for mayor when you don't. Well, he, he did. So I had actually three years off. And during that time was a discussion of what to do about a library for College Station. Now, some of you uh, may remember the bookmobile that was, came to Gibson Shopping, the center. Where is that? <laughs> I, I see a few heads nodding. It was the corner of what was Jersey and Texas Avenue. Where's Jersey? That's George Bush Drive. Okay. It was a Gibson Shopping. It was the, was a big was that it, at that time it was a big discount store, and they they had a, a bookmobile, the Brian College, uh, Brian Library System. Redmond Terrace. It was Redmond Terrace. That's right. It was Redmond Terrace. Yeah. So they, they had a bookmobile, and we'd make great use of it. They had two young children at the time, and uh, I think we had, we had at least one. I, yeah. um, and we made use of that. Well, during the time, that three-year period between council and mayor, that bookmobile essentially had died. It, it just came too, became too expensive to maintain, and so that service had ended. And College Station started talking about what to do about a library. And so when I finished my term as a uh, council member, I was appointed as chairman of a committee to look at what to do about a library in College Station. And the, I'll get into that a little bit of detail later. But basically that 
that was the one that investigated how to serve College Station with, with a public library. Okay, now if I can work this right. There are actually three components of the Bryan College Station Public Library. There's the Carnegie, what's now called the Carnegie History Center. It was the old Carnegie Library. There's the Clara B. Mounts Public Library in Bryan, which used to be called the Bryan Public Library. And the Larry J. Ringer Public Library in College Station, which used to be called the College Station Public Library. The first library in, in the in the area was the Carnegie. In 1902, there was an, a group in Bryan called the Mutual Improvement Society. It was a group of women. If you want to get anything done, you put together a group of women. <laughs> My wife made me put that in. Okay. Brian at that time was a wild town. A lot of bars, almost nightly fight, gunfights sometimes even. I mean, it was wild from what I hear. I wasn't there. Okay. The Methodist Church started over a bar. Yeah. In downtown Brian. In Brian. Okay. Church on top, bar yep. in the Made communion a whole different thing, didn't it? <laughs> uh, Methodist is the only I, but I'm a Methodist. It's only grape juice, folks. Um, this this group, the Mutual Improvement Society, the women applied to the Carnegie Foundation for funding for a library, and got a favorable response. The library was built. The, what's now the Carnegie History Center, but the Carnegie Library was built for about $10,000. Now, that's not 10,000 today's dollars. That's 10,000 of those dollars. One of the conditions was that the city council designate $1,000 annually for upkeep. Okay. So it was completed and opened in 1903. There's a picture. I don't think it's quite that old, but that's the picture of the old library. Now, skip forward just a little less than 100 years. In 1999, the Carnegie Library was reopened and restored. I guess it was the other order. Restored and reopened and renamed as the Carnegie History Library. This is the old Bryan Library. And the whole, it houses local history collections, genealogical information, and so forth. So if you're into gene genealogy, there's a lot of resources there for you, right? There's a picture of it, but it looks like kind of today. The Bryan Public Library was built in 1969. In 2009, it was renamed for Clara Mounts, who had been the director of the public library, Bryan Public Library, and then also the library system for almost 31 years. She'd been an employee of the library for about 31 years when she retired. She was director of the library system for much of that time. She's the one that put me where I am today in terms of all my involvements with libraries, other than just a big user. And she was responsible for many of the programs that are being offered by the library system today. In 1995, there was a fire I don't remember all the details of, the, of it. It seems to me there was a homeless individual that somehow involved, but I don't remember. And so there was a major restoration work done. The library had to be closed and work done to, to, uh, with, the, with the collection, et cetera. Okay. The Mounts Library, as you, those of you who've used it know, it's a two-story building. There are collections on both floors. Uh, currently, I, I don't remember exactly which, which collections are everywhere, but they're children, they're separated. There are, there's a, very, there's a bell, very small meeting room, study room on the first floor. There's a large meeting room on the second floor. And something that people are talking to today 
we're, we were talking about a subject that's a little removed from this, but for many years now, I've been involved with the uh, AARP tax service, doing free tax returns. And the, the, there's, one, there's one group that works at Bryan Library, the other group works at the, in College Station Library. And uh, they use that big meeting room for, their, for that service. Um, there's also on the second floor, there's a computer lab. And the library offers computer instruction. And then the basement has storage area. <clears throat> and the, the, um, if you are, as I have been doing, or Gene and I have been doing for the last golly, month, it seems like now, trying to figure out how you're going to move from a large house to a small apartment, you find yourself with a lot of books and things to give away. And you take those to the library. When up, and you ring the doorbell and run. No. <laughs> no, you take them to the library, and they will, they will go through and see if there's any that they would, might like to put in their collection. And then the rest of them go to the friends. And the friends, twice a year, have an annual book sale. And uh, they use this large room at the, at the, at the Mounts Library for that annual book sale. Okay. Um, and it's a major fundraiser for the Friends organization. The Friends provide a lot of support for the library system. So there's a picture of the Mounts Library. As I said, built in 1969. There had been rumors in the past about either adding on to the library or building a branch library to serve Brian, um, because it is, it is downtown Brian. Its parking is sometimes a premium. The parking garage, if you don't mind paying, most of us are too cheap to do that, um, and, and so forth. And it, it's right across the railroad tracks from the Carnegie, which is convenient unless there's a train going by. <laughs> it is also the difficult sometimes to have meetings there because they do use the, the large rooms for meetings because the train goes by. And, it, and I understood Brian was looking at, the council was looking at some way to, to have a no, no whistle zone or whatever they call it for the, but, but we require doing away with some of the crossings. But anyway, so that's, that's Brian. College Station. I said it was served by a bookmobile for many years. When we were first here, we, we used it greatly. We went to what it was had was the Redmond Terrace Shopping Center on the corner of what is now George Bush and Texas Avenue. And uh, I think it was once a week it came and you would go in and you would you could uh, check out books. Our, we, our kids used it a lot. In 1986, when I was a off the council, before I was mayor, I was appointed a committee to investigate library options. There were three options discussed. One was a, well, three things discussed. One was an independent library, uh, independent from Bryant. Complete system, college station, public library system. No relationship to the Bryant public library system. That was one of the options. Another option was to be essentially a branch of the Bryant library. And then the question was location. Where could we put it? Put it whichever choice we made. Okay. The, the decision on the, low, the type of facility, I think, was fairly easy. There was a lot, there, I did get letters from people saying we want nothing to do with Brian. There probably were people in Bryan who said we want nothing to do with College Station too, but I didn't get those letters. But <laughs> no, it basically, what they were afraid of was that I think 
the, the tone of the letters was that the Bryan City Council would dictate to College Station what it could do. Um, the choice of the committee was to form a Bryan College Station public library system. It just made sense. You have one director instead of two. You have one person basically in charge of the financial things. Um, it just it, it made it, I think, a better. There's a, one of the advantages, of course, is you can, if those of you may have done, a lot of you may do this. You go online now, couldn't then, but you go online now and, and find a book you want, but it's at the Bryan Library. So you say, I want to check it out. I'll pick it up at College Station. It comes over. It's due back. You can drop it at either library. Now, I say that if you've been to the College Station Library recently, <laughs> when it's closed, you can't drop it. The, the book drop is kaput right now, but it will be back in business. Okay. So as I said, it was, it was a choice. The first choice location was a storefront property just south of Southwest Parkway. Now my wife and, had, and I had a little argument about where it was. I think it was where Brown Shoe is now. Oh darn you people. I don't like you now. Now, as, as usual, she was right. Okay, but it was nearer there. Caddy Corn. Caddy Corn. Okay. Okay. Darn, that's what she told me. And I said, no, no, you're not right. Okay. It, it opened in 1987. 3,320 20 square feet, 3,320 square feet of library. In October of 89, expanded to 5,070 square feet. In, in the 86 to 86 to 87 year, the collection size, size was about 10,000 items. Now keep in mind, you could check things out that were in the Bryan Library. They would deliver them there and you would pick them up. And then, now we didn't have the online or wasn't easily available then to do that, so it made may have taken two trips to do it, okay? In 94 to 95, the collection size was 32,000. That was when it expanded the building size too. Circulation in 87 to 88 was around 50,000. In 94 to 95, it was 170,000. So it's obvious, I think, if you look at those numbers, that at College Station needed a public library. In 1996, voters approved bonds for the construction of the library on a second election or a second vote. How many of you remember the proposal to bury <coughs> Welburn Road or bury the railroad tracks? The, uni the university, basically Board of Regents, I think, but the university proposed because the West Campus was expanding, so there's a lot of traffic back and forth, foot traffic, the major concern. So they proposed putting the railroad tracks basically in a trench from, I, I, if I remember correctly, I couldn't find the details, somewhere north of, of University Drive to Wells Alpha campus. It would have involved taking property on the corner of what is now George Bush and Auburn Road. And there is a, a Unitarian church, I believe, that was involved. And there was very strong opposition to that plan. And I went to 
um, I went to a meeting at the Unitarian Church. And an individual quizzed me rather heedily about the plan. Now, I won't tell you his name, what his name is, but if you drive by the baseball park at AM, you'll see it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not Tom Chandler. <laughs> um, very opposed, because the church was, the, the, was going to lose their property. And so there was a vote, the bond issue vote, and two items on the bond, or at least two items on the bond issue, one of which was bonds to do this entrenching of Welburn Road, if you want to say that. Which, if you looked at the total cost of the project, the College Station commitment was pretty minor, actually, pretty minor. And building the library. The library, the, the issue to issue bonds to build a library, public library at College Station failed by, I think it was five votes. Oh. And we attributed a lot of that to people who were so against the university plan to bury Welburn Road and, then, and and the cost that was going to make, make the city do, which was actually very minor compared to the total cost. Um, and, and the railroad was going to be buried too, as I recall. <laughs> but um, that they just voted no on everything. So we went back, went back. I've, by this time I was back to mayor again. Now I was off the committee. I was thinking back, anyway, no, 86? Yeah, I was. Uh, we went back to do it on the next election, and it passed overwhelmingly. Okay. So in 96, um, they approved. No, I just, I just finished being mayor, come to think of it. Now they, they think of it. Uh, so in 96, they, we, on the second vote, we had approval for bond construction, for bonds to build the construction. In 97, the library opened. College Station Public Library, and in, 19, in, in 2004 it was renamed the Larry J. Ringer Library. Yes. <laughs> when, when somebody called my wife to just tell them that, her first comment was, well, I guess I'll have to learn to read. <laughs> okay. Now, I try to find a picture of the Ringer Library. And I couldn't find one anywhere, so I went and took one. <laughs> this is what's happening now. Major addition is under construction. It will almost double the size of the library. The construction company doesn't like it, but one of the conditions I think the city put on was that the, that the construction be staged such that the library be closed for a day or two at a time as opposed to shutting it down for the whole summer. Now it lengthens, of course, obviously lengthens the time that it takes to redo, or to add the addition. I apologize for the size of this, but that's the current layout. The tops are meeting rooms. The top two rooms are, are meeting rooms or study rooms. Those two rooms during the tax season are used by the AARP tax service. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I've turned around. Tom to the bottom. My picture here is upside down from that one. The bottom ones. Um, that's front entrance, the staff area, and to the right is the is the is the is the meeting room, etc. Okay. There's the addition. This is this is the this is the expansion on that side. It will be state. It will be done so that there's glass on one of the walls, but the other wall is not, so that you don't get the afternoon sun. The current meeting room is a major expansion. And this area is currently the staff area. This will be the new staff area. But that's that's the expan ba a basic idea of the expansion plan. A major expansion in the 
collections area, in, in the rooms, in the space in the collection area. Um, much, much larger meeting room. Uh, the, the meeting room was such that they almost, any, for any of the summer reading programs they have for the young children, they almost had to have two sessions uh, because it just couldn't hold the demand. I'm glad you asked when is it supposed to be, not when will it be. <laughs> My understanding is it'll take about two years to do the construction. Yeah. This summer, the, the reading programs are taking place at a church that they, has offered to help with that, give the facilities across the street, basically. and. Uh, so not, now there's one or two that won't be able to do, they won't be able to do there, they'll have to do it at the library. Currently there are reading programs for all ages. Maybe that the slide I just went over back. Uh, toddlers to adults. Uh, there's meeting rooms available at both libraries. There are study rooms available at both libraries. And there's a computer lab at the Mounts Library. 2017, there were over 414,000 visitors to the library system. Over 924,000 items checked out. Is this both libraries? This is the system, so it would be actually the three, except you really can't check things out at Carnegie. Uh, they frown on most of anything, except in special cases, things leaving the library. There were 1,486 programs, when you look at the programs for all ages, toddlers through seniors. The attendance of that program was 48,745. And there were over 51,000 phone and email questions that were asked. Those questions range from anything to, from is such and such a book available to how do I fill out my income tax, I think. I don't, you know. Almost anything. And the library could not operate without volunteers. There are over 10,867 volunteer hours. These are the volunteers who help put the books back on the shelf. You know, it's awful easy. You just drop it in that, when you return it, you drop it in that return slot. Somebody has to put it back on the shelf and, and put it in the right place. I almost got in trouble one time at, at Ringer Library. If you've been in, you use it, there's a bookshelf near the checkout counter that's the recent the releases, books. And I looked up and they're generally alphabetized by author, last name, author. And I thought, those aren't in the right place, so I started. <laughs> <laughs> well, it turns out there's a certain genre of literature that people like. I don't, but people others like, that has a lot of different authors. And so what they do is put those books together. So there I am back, putting them back <laughs> where I got them. Okay. All right. But it, it, the library system, as you can see, has, has grown from what it was and when the Carnegie was first built. It is also the budget is much greater than what it was then. Major funding for the library, of course, is city, the two cities. College Station has a contract with Bryan for X dollars a year. It's a multi-year contract. The personnel at the College Station Library are actually employees of the city of Bryan. They're not employees of College Station. College Station Library is under the, the auspices of the Department of Parks and Recreation for the city of College Station. There is a contract for, for, for Brian to operate the library and then and also College Station includes money for additions to the, to the uh, collection at College Station. 
funding for the libraries, other than funding from the two cities, of course, are grants. There's a state library uh, that has programs that give out grants for different things, gifts, etc. Okay. One of the major organizations associated with all that. There's a Friends of the Bryan College Station Public Library System. It's a long title. Their funding comes basically from book sales. There are two annual book sales. If you are a member, you get to go an hour early, which may or may not be an advantage. Because you walk in, and the tables are just loaded with books. There are usually boxes of books under the table because there's no room to put them up. These are the books that either the library has called, have taken out of the collection because basically they're not being circulated anymore. Or there are books that those of us have bought and read and don't want to store them, we give them to the friends. And then the friends put them on sale. And a bag of books a grocery bag, one of those normal brown paper bags, cost, what, $10? $20. 20 of we went up, didn't we? $20. Okay. And, then, and then if you go Saturday yeah. late. Sunday. Sunday, I'm sorry, Sunday late. The sale is a Saturday, Sunday sale. If you go af Sunday afternoon, the volunteers don't want to haul those books back down to the basement. So the price, there's a cut price that gets cheaper. Of course, the collection has been pretty well picked over by then. But, uh, okay. From that, those resources, the friends, the, they, the, of course, friends also have dues. You have regular dues, individual dues, family dues, lifetime dues. Lifetime, if, you, if you're a lifetime member, your, your contribution as a lifetime membership is invested. And the income from that investment fund is to return back to the friends to use for operating costs. The capital gains in that investment fund is reinvested. Uh, we've got the friends, as I say, support the reading programs. Much, some of the budget of those reading programs comes from state grants and other programs, but the Friends provide quite a bit of, of fun, financial support for that. The Friends have the copiers and fax machines that are available at the library are the Friends. They're not the cities, they're not the library. They, are, they belong to the Friends. So the revenue from those um, copy machines goes into the Friends budget as revenue. Of course, the cost also does, because we pay for the service and the ink and the paper. Um, I have just recently stepped down as treasurer of the Friends after 10 plus years, which basically involved a trip to the library every week and Friday, usually on a Friday, sometimes Saturday to pick up the collection money and take it to the bank. Does that have anything to do with you moving to a smaller apartment? <laughs> <laughs> it, it, no, it, it, it just, it, at, at the last, this is a side note, at the last friends meeting, it was the time when you you'd nominate, you have a, somebody you'd like to see on the friends board and, and there is a limit to how many people can be on the board for the Friends. And they got to the, and I'd already indicated that I was, yes, I, I was ready to retire as treasurer of the Friends. Uh, and partially because moving into a smaller place, I didn't have the space and all. And it was just, um, but we got to the point where people were naming people and somebody said, do you, anybody else have one? And I, as I asked the question, is there a limit how many people can be on the board? And they said, yes, there is, and we're at it. And somebody said, but I have some people I want to be on the board. I said, fine, you got my seat. <laughs> uh, 
No, I've, I've been on the Friends board basically since I don't know when. So it was, it was time to let some fresh blood come in. Okay. Um, so Is it all old blood? Pardon me? Is it all old blood? You said fresh blood, but is it all old, old blood? No, there well, oh, I'm not going to. You, you, you two, either you two want to answer the question about fresh blood, because <laughs> uh, I've got some other long-term, long-term. Yeah, I got some long-time members of Friends sitting over here. Uh, of the of the Friends board. Oh, that, yeah, there are younger people. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and things are, you know. It, it, when things change, the way they do things changes, and it has. And I've, I've heard from the library, the, the librarian's assistant, uh, secretary down there. Okay, um, the, as I said, the friends support the reading programs. They provide the, the machines for the copier and, and, and supplies for the copiers and faxes, but they get the revenue from that. And then there are other support services, such as text share and the electronic sources that are provided by the friends. Those are things that you can use on, do online to look up special things. Okay, so that's what I have prepared. And you're lucky I could find it. <laughs> no, I, I had put it aside. I said, I don't care what else happens. This has to stay where I can see it. That's in the movie. So, are there questions? <laughs>